Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony. This is the 15 Minute Gamer. And in today's video, we are back in DCS with the second part of using your Xbox controller to play DCS. In the last video, I showed you how to set up your controller in Steam so that the right analog stick acts as a mouse pointer. And in this video, we'll be setting up all the controls within DCS. The controller layout I am using is by a great YouTuber called Tuvas. Link in the description to his channel and to the web page with all the layouts on. The layouts are in like alphabetical order and they're really well done. So you can change a few things around if you want or swap them around. But of course, it's personal preference. But I found them to be as I would probably do them. Now, you're probably thinking there's just not enough buttons on the controller to play DCS. And this is where modifiers come into play. And it soon becomes second nature when playing how to use the modifiers and when to click them and when to not. I have the controller set up on my second screen as I play, which I find helps me a lot. The layout we're going to do today is for the F14 Tomcat, but the process is the same for them all. Now, with that being said, don't forget, if you like the video, drop it a like. Comment below if you have any questions and, of course, subscribe for more content. Right, let's get on with it. So now that we're in DCS, we go at the cog at the top of the screen. We go to controls. You go to the left hand side here and select the aircraft you want to set up. In my case, I'm going to go for F-14 pilot. However, this process is the same for them all. The first thing you want to do is click on all but axes commands, click on controller so it highlights it all and then click clear category click yes click on axes commands do the same click on there and the reason we're doing this is because as you can see there are already commands set up in here if you click clear category it will then get rid of any presets in there because you might not want them the same as what DCS has them set because they have the throttle set on um, Z axes, which is the rudders. So yeah, you might want to just change that. Once you've done that, come down here and go to modifiers. You want to select this section here where it says modifiers, not switches. Now, as I said, modifiers are a way to make one button do multiple things. So it's kind of like holding the shift key on your keyboard. You know, if you just press the button normally, it does a little letter. You press shift or hold it down and then it can do like a uppercase letter. That's it's no different to that. So we're going to click add. We're going to select controller for Xbox 360 for Windows. First one we're going to do is the left bumper. As you can see, I press on there and it'll put drive button five and we click OK. We click add again, select the controller, select modifier. And this time we'll select drive button six, which is the right bumper. So you can see there and then click OK. So what this will allow us to do within DCS is we can have our first set of controls set up with no modifiers. Second set of controls set up with one of the bumpers. Third set of controls set up with the other bumper. And then finally, the fourth set of controls set up with both bumpers. So this means the Y button can be Y. It can be left bumper Y, right bumper Y, and both bumpers Y. So you can see you get four uses out of one button, which is how it works so well. Once you've done that, click OK. Now we're going to start setting up the controls. So remember, have your aircraft selected here. We're going to go into Axis Commands. Now, top left on the picture you would have got from that website shows you all the controls first off without a modifier and the kind of the most important controls you're going to use, pitch, roll, trim, nose wheel steering, triggers, store releases. It's buttons you're going to use all the time, rudder. So yeah, this is where we're going to set up. So Axis Commands, first thing we want is pitch. Come down here, double click in the box, and that'll come to pitch. So pitch is obviously up and down. So with your left thumbstick, just move it up and down, and that'll put joy Y. Click OK. Now, if you press up and down, you can see the joy Y is going up and down. Next up is roll. So obviously that's left and right roll. 
Again, double click, move your left thumbstick left and right, click OK, and there you go, you can see, Joy X. Now we're gonna go down to rudder, which is here, and these are your trigger buttons. So just press both trigger buttons, one after another, left, right, left, right, click OK. Now, if we highlight, if you press the left trigger, you'll see there, right trigger, go up there. So now we've got our three basic controls in, which is pitch to go up and down, left and right, and rudder. We now need to do something called axis tune. Now what axis tune does is allow you to put dead zones in and invert. The reason you want to invert on one of them is the rudder. So if I press left, you can see it goes right. If I press right, it goes left, which is a little bit confusing. So we're going to click on here. We're going to go to axis tune. We're not going to change anything else on here. We're just going to click invert. Okay, see that moves the graph and then click OK. Now if I press left, it goes left. If I click right, it goes right. The two we do need to axis tune is Y and X axes. Now I'd always recommend if you're using a stick on your controller to axis tune it afterwards. Now, once I go in, it'll kind of explain it a little bit better. We have something called a dead zone. Now, you may have heard of joystick drift before. Switch controllers are notorious for it. Now, this basically means when you let go of the controller, it doesn't always go back in the center. So you get a little bit of drift. It might go left, right, up or down. And you do not want that within DCS. So I always add a dead zone. And if you can see here, how it flattens the line out. So if I went, I mean, that's extreme, but you know what I mean? Like you can see it. So I usually put mine at around about between six and eight, depending on what mood I'm in. Now, if I move this, can you see the little red square? It doesn't always return to the middle. Can you see how sometimes it does? Sometimes it doesn't. Like that's well out. And that would mean if I was flying, when I let go of this controller, if I didn't have a dead zone set up like that then that would start moving me all the time. So that's why you put a little bit of a dead zone in just to compensate for any joystick drift you have. I also put a curvature of around about 10 on all my controllers. And what this does, if we put a zero, can you see how it's kind of getting it there? And you can use your keyboard or whatever to set it up thingy. But can you see if I move like that, can you see it goes all the way at the top? If I put a bit of curve in, and I always put around about 10. It just means when you get to the extremes of the movement, it kind of smooths it out a little bit rather than just going up in a straight line constantly. So it like kind of makes it more smooth control. So I'd always recommend putting some curvature in. So I'm gonna click okay. I'm also gonna do this for joystick X as well. So axis tune, put a dead zone in. That's probably a bit too much. Five should do. So let's have a look. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then a bit of a curvature in as well. So we'll put our 10 in, which is good. Now, just press all your controls. And what you want to make sure is there's no little white lines there. If there's a little white line, like a tiny one, it means you've got some drift and you might have to increase your dead zone. I hope that makes sense. Any questions? Leave them below. Right, so now we're going to start setting up some of the other buttons. So the best way to do this is by going into search and we're just gonna go around the controller. So we've got toggle menu. So I'm just gonna press menu, toggle menu for gesture. I'm gonna click in here and we're gonna put that as Y. Click OK. We're gonna to go to DLC toggle. There we go. We're gonna click in here and that is X. We're going to put in here levers up. So basically that's throttle. So we're going to go levers up is B. And we're going to go levers down is A. Don't worry about mouse because that's already set up for you already. We did that within Steam. And then we've got the trim. So we're going to go trim. Oops, if I could spell trim. <laughs> Um, so you've got trim pitch up, down, left, and right. So down, 
I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but down is up <laughs> on there. Because obviously when you fly, and it, it makes sense. So yeah, down is up. Up is down. If you accidentally use a key and the same, so we'll put that in there for left. And then say I'm on here and accidentally press left again, it'll tell you it's already in use. So if you see that, just, you know, you've done something wrong. And then click OK. So you can see they're all set up. We've got mouse wheel steering. Or nose wheel, sorry, nose wheel. So we're going to look at nose wheel steering toggle. And we're going to put that as click. So just press in left mouse stick and click it in. And finally, we've got store release and trigger. So we're going to put store release. There we go. Which is the, I don't know, is that the share button it's called? I'm not too sure. It's on the left. Click OK. And then trigger. That's the button on the left, which I think is a menu button. And then click OK. Now, if we get rid of all the things on here, like so, click on Xbox 360 controller. If we press up, we'll go down, down, left, and right. This is how you test you've got them all. Press Y, toggle menu, X, DLC toggle, B, levers up, A, levers down. We've got rudder, left and right. Obviously, that will be on X's command. We've got store release. And we've got trigger. So we've got all the buttons set up in there. Each time you do this, I would recommend you click OK and then go back into it just because sometimes the controls just decide to delete themselves. When you've done it, I would always recommend saving your profile as well. Always do that because if it deletes them all, it's a pain in your ass to get them back. Right, and now we're going to look at how to add your uh, modifiers in and how all that works together. I'm just going to cover these. I'm not going to go through each one and set them all up. I'll just show you how it works. So we're going to go back into search. We're going to type in flaps up. So there we go, flaps up and down. You can see here that it's asking you and it's highlighted the modifier. So flaps up needs to be Y, but modified. So we click on here. We add in our modifier, which is right bumper then we press y so it's basically saying when you press right bumper then y at the same time then your flaps will go up click ok can you see how that puts double in now if i clear this again if i press y toggle menu if i hold down right bumper and y I now go to flaps up. That's the same with flaps down. So if we look for flaps again. So I'm going to add in the modifier. And then I'm going to press X, which then will put my flaps down. Now, one of the most important ones you need is force cursor to show. Now, why this is so important is it swaps the controller between having to look around the cockpit and clicking on things. So like that's how you click things once the cursor's on. Once you turn the cursor off, it will go to being able to look around the, the whole aircraft and look up the sky and follow targets and stuff like that. So it's really important, this one. So again, we're going to modify. We're going to push right stick in button 10. I also always, always put this to a mouse button as well. So I use mouse button five. I've got a button on the side because sometimes if I've got autopilot on, I'm just flying. I like to use the mouse to click around because it's just easier. You haven't got the hotasses in your way. So I always put it to a mouse button as well. Same as zoom. Zoom will be on there. Now, zoom is an interesting one to do. So we will we'll select that, which is an axis command and zoom view. Can you see there that it's set already? Zoom view is Z, which is your um, scroll wheel in and out. The difference is if you use your mouse to zoom, it will stay in the position you stop zooming. So if you want to look at something, you zoom in and have a look. On the controller, it will always snap back. It's really annoying, like really, really annoying. But you just got to kind of hold the trigger. So you'll kind of like hold it in that position. So we're going to click on there. However... That is very handy if you just want to snap zoom to have a look at something, how far something is away or whatever, because then as soon as you let go, it'll snap back. So zoom view is this time 
We're going to add our modifier for Joy Button 5, which is a left bumper. We're then going to press the triggers to put Joy Z. Click OK. Can you see that in? Now, if we hold Joy 5 and zoom in, there you go, in and out, in and out. Easy as that. Now, if we've got two modifiers, so we're going to look for night vision goggles. Now, you'll notice with the two modifiers, they're kind of things that you're not going to use very often. Like, you know, your mic buttons to communicate, you don't use them a hell of a lot. Left and right engine cut off. Again, you're only going to use that when you land. Occupy real seats, so if you want to go as um, like the gunner type thing. Things you're not going to use, you know, night vision goggles, wheel brake. Um, so, yeah, you can see why they're on, on double modifiers. But double modifiers work the same way. So we're going to modify one, we're going to modify two, and we're going to press Y. So joy button four. And click OK. Again, we're going to click OK just to make sure it's all saved. We're going to go back in. Now, we're going to click on, actually, we'll just click there. So I press Y, toggle menu. It also does flaps up if I hold both. And then does night vision goggles. So can you see how Y, I mean, we didn't set it up for um, left bumper, but that would just be VSL high. Can you see how that then works? And that is all you need to do. You just need to set up, get your controllers in. It's the same, use your modifiers, set them up, click OK, save your profile, and that's you done. You can then go off and fly. Now we're going to jump in the F14. So now you can see that the cursor is moving around the screen. Remember when I said force, <clears throat> remember when I said force cursor on and off? So I'm going to hold right bumper, click in, and now I can look around. So I can look up, around, down. So if I want to click something down there, I can then have a little look. So I'm going to force I'm going to force the cursor back on by doing that. So now we have access to it. I can then zoom in by holding the other modifier. There we go. So I can zoom in and out like that. And I can click that up and down. So I can click everything I need to do. And then I just force it back on like so. Zoom back out. Let's test the rudders. Mm -hmm. Rudders look fine. We've got acceleration down there and throttle. There's my Jester controllers, so I can bring that up and down. Easy as that. There's a the throttle, so up and down, up and down like so. Now we'll move that up. Nose wheel steering on now, so it means we can steer a little bit better. And yeah, that's it. That's how you can use your controller within DCS. No issues at all. You don't have to take your hands off the controller. You can do everything you want via the controller. Um, so as I said, just click in. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch us on the next one. Goodbye.